Today, we're going to be starting a series titled Changing the Narrative. Changing the Narrative. We're going to change it up. We're going to change it up. Because God has a point of view. And truth be told, we have a point of view as well. And when we have a point of view that's different from God's point of view, that's going to some frustration mm. there's going to cause some issues in our life a narrative is a way of presenting or understanding a situation or series of events that reflects and promotes a particular point of view or a set of values it's a way of presenting or understanding a situation or series of events that reflects and promotes a particular point of view or a set of values. I told you God has a narrative. God has uh, allowed series of events to happen in our life because he's trying to promote a point of view. Sometimes when we go through those series of events, it does not feel good. And, but in that, God wants us to reflect because he's trying to get us to see it from his point of view. And also in that, he wants us to learn some different values because sometimes we have our mind already made up on things. We have our mind already made up on how this thing should turn out. We have our mind already made up on how he should do it. And reality is most of the time and majority of the time it's not going to work out how you think. But it's going to work out on how yeah, you have to know that in every situation God has your best interest yes. at heart. Yes. God wants more for you than you want for yourself. Amen. I know that sign, that, that, like what? what yeah. God's plans are for you mm. are bigger than your plans for yourself. All right. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's All why right. he says in his word in Ephesians 3, he says, he says, I'm able to do exceedingly yeah, right. and abundantly, and abundantly yeah. above anything. Anything to me, anything. That's right. nothing outside of anything. So yeah. up, God says, I want to do bigger than yes. you for that. I want to do exceedingly above you for that. I want to do abundantly yes. more for you than you can think about for yourself. So whatever, some of us got big imaginations in here. And however big your imagination is, God says, I can do bigger. I can do better. I can do more. And I desire to do more for you. God wants to change your narrative in this situation. God wants to change your narrative in this season. Change your narrative. Because some of us and all of us are in a situation and in a season that God wants to change the narrative. Mm. Simply meaning your point of view and how you see it. Yes. You think it should turn out this way. But God says, I am going to turn it out yes. this way. Mm. Because he says, I'm the God that wrote, Romans 8.28 says, I will work <laughs> all, all things. things. Some translation says, he says, I will make work together for your good. Mm. And my glory. Yes. I will am the God who is able to make all things work together for your good and for my glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. So wherever you are, whatever situation that you are in, whatever season that you in, God wants to change your point of view on how you see it. Thank you, Lord. We serve a God. 
that when you get him, everything was included. It's an all-inclusive package. Nothing lacking. Nothing. I want to talk to you from our, and our, our foundational scripture for this campaign is 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, but whenever you see something beforehand happen. And for the sake of time, we're not going to go through it, but you need to go back and see why verse 9 starts out with but. Somebody had a point of view before that that wasn't in alignment with God. Somebody had a point of view on, that was short, mm -hmm. a much lower on, than the plans that God had God, for you yeah, yeah. in that situation and in that to correct some people. <laughs> Paul had to correct Come the situation. On, Paul had to correct a point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And says, he begins out, if you go back and look at first, uh, verses 1 through 8, because they had a point of view Come on. that was much lower, lower than, than what God had about the situation. Right. They were dealing with a situation from human logic. Yeah. They were trying to deal with a situation that they were applying man-made opinions. And when you apply man-made opinions, you get man-sized results. And I don't know about you, but you heard me say this before. I'm tired, tired, I'm tired, boss. I'm tired, boss, of man-sized results. I don't know about you, but I want some God-sized results. God-sized results in my situation. I need some God-sized results in this season. And so if you want some God-sized results in your situation, if you want some God-sized results in your situation, in your season, then you got to begin to say what God says about the situation and not what you think about the situation. So Paul steps on the scene and says, this is what you said. This is how you was handling the situation. And these are the results you was getting. But it is season in that situation. He starts out verse 9. He says, but. But. But, as it is written, uh -huh. Uh -huh. he says, no eye has seen, yeah. come on, come on. no ear has heard, Woo. no has Answered. the heart of come man on. imagine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what God is for those for that those. love him. Come on, man. <laughs> Can I read that one more time? Yeah. That sounded real good. He said, but it, as it is written, what no eye has seen, because of your applying human logic, eyes have not seen. If He says, no ears have heard. If you're applying human logic, you have not heard. He says, nor the heart of man imagine. If you're applying human logic, it's not entered to your heart what God has for you. Because the Bible declares that faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if you're hearing the logic of man, the only thing that's in your heart is the result of what man says. But if you are saying what God said, then out of the abundance of your heart, behaviors will follow, results will follow. So if you're saying what God said... It has promised. It says, what God has prepared for those that love him. So he is saying, Paul has to correct human logic. God wants to correct your point of view on how you're seeing the situation of the day. God wants to correct how you're seeing yourself in this season. So today I want to talk from the subject. I want to talk from the subject on today. It's bigger than this. I need somebody to say that with me. It's bigger than this. 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 Let me tell you one of the issues why Paul had to come and correct Try human logic to oh, divine man. situations. Mm. They were trying to correct something with human ideologies and human logic. Oh, they man. were trying to correct situations with 
human reasoning. And if the enemy can get you to keep thinking naturally, then you will miss out on what God desires to do supernaturally. If the enemy can get you to think and continue to think naturally, then you will miss out on what God desires to do supernaturally. I need you to get it. If the enemy can get you to keep thinking naturally, then you will miss out on what God is doing. So Paul was trying to correct a human thinking, natural thinking, mm -hmm. because they were missing out on what God desires to do supernaturally. I want to ask a question in here. You don't have to raise your hand, but have you been trying to solve things with natural reasoning, with natural ideas, with natural reasoning, and negating what God desires to do supernaturally. A lot of times because we are talented, gifted people, we come up with natural ways and handling things. And when we do natural results. But I'm telling you, you are not serving a natural God. You are serving a God who is able to do things supernaturally. You're serving a God who desires and only does things supernaturally. And so when you begin to do things out of your natural gifts, out of your natural talent, and not allow God to put the super on it, then you're going to get natural results. And God desires the results Come in this now. season. That's right. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to keep you thinking mm. here. When you serve a God who only operates here. Mm. You have to know that you are seated mm. in heavenly places. Yes. You are on, seated Pastor. above Come situations. Yes, right. You have the ability and the authority to engage if ever you decide to engage with any activity, it's on you. So if you engage with it here, then you're going to get results here. But if you engage with it from a supernatural a far to the, a place that God has set you, then you're going to get supernatural results. You're going to get results that only God. God can give. Yes. Like, like, let me give you a supernatural example. When God begins to say things like one could put 1,000 to flight, uh -huh. but two could yes. put 10,000 yes. to flight. Now, in the natural, if one could put 1,000 to flight, in the natural, right. but God says, one, when you're dealing with me, when you're applying my word, yes. one equals 10. On, one plus one doesn't equal two, yes. but one plus one equals 10. That's, that's what he says. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. When you're dealing with a guy who says, will a man rob God? He says, how are you robbing God? He says, in your finances. He says, he says, and when you give, I'm going to pull you out blessings that you don't even have room enough to take in. Somebody said, that's supernatural. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. God says, I will rebuke the devourer concerning your finances. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. You're dealing with a God when you apply his word, then you get supernatural results. That's right, Pastor. But when you apply man-made opinion, man-made idea, you get man-sized results. I'm not going to say, like, like man-sized results are okay, but I'm not settling for mediocrity in this season. Come on now. You don't serve a mediocre God. No, come on now. You don't serve a God who wants you to have just enough. Just enough. You serve a God that says, I'm going to bless you to be a blessing. You serve a God that says, again, he says, I'm going to do something in your time that they would not believe of you would not believe even if I told you so. That's the type of girl God you serve. You serve a God that says, come and buy things with no money. You serve a God that says, I will open up heaven. 
Yes. You serve that type of God. Yes. You heard me say that it's two times in the Bible where God says I'll open up heaven. But it's two times in the Bible where God says I'll open up the windows of heaven. Mm -hmm. And when God, and both times, when he says I'll open up the windows of heaven, it was always talking about abundance. In, in Genesis, he tells Noah, he says, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. It's going to flood. Mm -hmm. Abundance came. In Malachi, he says, try me in your finances. See, I open up the windows of heaven again. It was an abundance in return. So when you apply the principles of God, then it's bigger than this. It's bigger than this. It's bigger than this, it's bigger. It's bigger than this. It's bigger. It's bigger than this situation that I'm in. Yeah. It's bigger than the results that I'm experiencing. It's bigger than this. It's bigger than this. It's bigger than where I am. It's bigger than what's happening. It's bigger than this. It's bigger than this. It's bigger than this. I just want to give you a nuggets, couple of nuggets today just to give you the introduction of this down today. It's bigger than this. We're talking about the law of vision. The law of vision. In Proverbs 29, 18, it says this. It says that without vision, people perish. Without God is saying, without a revelation of me and who I am and what I'm able to do, people say you can't see it before you see it, then you cannot have it. If you cannot see it before you see it, then you cannot have it. Yes. You first have to see it in your mind before you can hold it in your hand. Yes. You got to see it before you see it. Because until you see it, you can't hold it. Mm. So Paul says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Mm. No, it's entered to the heart of man the things that God has for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I want to use a, 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 a few verses from Matthew chapter 26 just to kind of relay a message on the day. Matthew chapter number 26, verses 6 through 26, verses 6 through 13. Now, Matthew 26 has 75 verses, has 75 verses. Um. Uh, it's right before Matthew chapter number 27. Yeah, y'all know that, right? It's right before Matthew chapter number 27. I need to set this up. In Matthew chapter number 27, it talks about the crucifixion of Jesus. It talks about how he got crucified. And right before you get to that, in Matthew chapter number 26, it has 25 verses. I want to deal with the first 16. In verse number 1 through 5, that it talks about how it says they plan. Now, this is the Jews, Pharisees and Sadducees. It said they, in, in verses 1 through 5, they came up with a plan on how to kill Jesus. In 1 through 5, they came up with a plan on how to kill Jesus. In verses number 14 through 16, it talks about how Judas agreed to betray Jesus. Y'all follow me. In verses 1 through 5, that's a point, that's a season. In verses 1 through 5, they had they came over to plan to kill Jesus. In verses number 14 through 16, Judas agrees to betray Jesus. But I want to deal with verses 6 through 13, that in-between place. Somebody said that in-between place. Some of you are going to see yourself in this in-between place. Somebody, some of you are going to see yourself in this in-between place, in the middle of a season. Oh, Let me read it to you. After they come up with a plan on how to kill him. It says, meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. I love when my wife teaches on this alabaster box. She does it well. It says, the disciples were indignant. I need you to remember that word. And when they saw this, they say, what a waste, they said. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, it could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. Verse 10. But Jesus, aware of this, for doing such a good thing to me. You will always have the poor among you. 
but you will not always have me. Ah. Verse 12, she has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. Uh -huh. I tell you the truth, last verse, I tell you, I tell you the truth, Whatever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. It's bigger than this. Jesus finds himself in verses 6 through 13 in a particular place. He finds himself in the middle of two seasons. One season, they plan on how to kill them in verse 14 through 16. Judas agrees on setting him up and betraying him. Right between those two seasons, right between those two seasons, something happens. Right between those two seasons, right between those two seasons, Jesus finds himself in a particular place, in a particular time, and so, one thing I want to tell you is this is when Jesus found himself in that place it says that a woman came with an alabaster box of perfume and she anointed Jesus at that place for that time for where he was about to go somebody following me already he was anointed over here he was going somewhere in, in, in Matthew 27 that was above him. Mm. He wasn't going to be able to handle. Mm. He was going to walk a road that none of us could walk. But he was prepared over here in Matthew 26. He was anointed in Matthew chapter number 26. God anoints you <laughs> Not only for the blessing, but for the process, the attacks, mm, mm. the test, mm. and the abundance that right. follow. Yeah. A lot of times we look yeah. at anointing, we think it's all about the blessing. Mm. We think it's all about this good stuff. But when, when Jesus was anointed over here, he was on, not only anointed for the blessing, mm. but he was anointed for the attack he yeah. was about to go through. He was anointed from the test he was about to incur. He was anointed for everything that was about to happen. See, God anoints us over here. And when sometimes we think God forgets about us when we're going through the process to do before it happens. Somebody said, I need some Bible for that. Something. In Matthew chapter number four, the Bible declares that after Jesus was baptized, it says that he was led by the spirit uh -huh. into the wilderness to be what? Tested yeah. and tempted yeah. by the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where did Jesus, what, now where was he anointed? He was anointed before it happened. Uh -huh. So you got to understand in this season, you got to understand that if you are going through a season, uh -huh. if you are going through a process, uh -huh. if you are going through a wilderness, if you are going Woo. through something in this season, you got to know without a shadow of a doubt, but you was anointed before it happened. The thing came about. You were prepared for what you are going through in this season. You are anointed for this process. You are anointed for this season. You are anointed for this mountain that's coming towards you. You are anointed for it. And you are appointed for it. For this season. You are anointed for this test. Tell your neighbor, you are anointed for this test. You are anointed for this test. Some of us are going through tests in this season. Some of us are going through all of these things in this season. And you need to know you are anointed for the test. You are anointed for the tempting. You for it. Are you listening to me? You are anointed for this season. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The disciple, they, they said it was a waste. What a waste. What a waste. What a waste. Some of your friends are telling you it's a waste for you to keep trying. 
The enemy is telling you it's a ways for you to keep persevering. Some, some, so the enemy is whispering in your ear right now. That was a ways. That's a ways for you to keep trying. That's a ways for you to keep going to church. That's a ways for you to keep sitting under this teaching. That's a ways for you to keep reading the Bible. That's a ways for you to keep doing that. That's a ways for you to keep doing that. But can I tell you the issue with the disciples? They seen Bethany. God seen Gethsemane. Ah, come on now. All they seen was Bethany because it says while they were in Bethany, were in Bethany. the woman with the alabaster yeah, box yeah, yeah, of yeah. perfume, oh, all yeah, they yeah. seen was Bethany. But Jesus seen what was going to happen in the next chapter. He seen Matthew chapter number 27 when Jesus was going to be in Gethsemane. All they see is where you are. They don't know where you are going. And so Jesus anoints you over here for the process it's going to take for you to get over here. And listen, all they see is Bethany. 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 They, see is Bethany. they don't know what your Gethsemane is. They don't know where you are going. They don't know what it takes to get there. And so God will anoint you over here because he knows what your Gethsemane is. I don't know who I'm talking to, but everybody Gethsemane ain't the same. Somebody Gethsemane is lax. Somebody Gethsemane is chaos. It is. You shout it out. They don't know what your Gethsemane is. They don't know what it is. They don't know what it is. All they seen was Bethany. God seeing Gethsemane. Yes. Your current situation doesn't have to determine your satisfaction in life. Yes. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Your current situation doesn't have to determine your satisfaction in life. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't. It's only a moment. It's only a moment. This too shall pass. He tells us in Psalms 30 and 5, he says his anger is only for, for a lifetime. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, yeah, yeah, yeah. but joy yeah. cometh yeah. in the morning. Yeah. So listen, listen, mm. listen, listen to me. Listen real good. Listen. If weeping was at your address in your home last night, mm. and you woke up with it this morning, then it's trespassing. Come on. Come on. That's good. Listen, listen to me. That's not me. Like the Bible says, it can only stay for a, it can only stay for a night because it says joy coming in the morning. Joy coming in the morning. So if you still woke up with worry, if you're still walking in doubt, if you're still walking in insecurity, if you're still walking in disbelief. If you're still walking in maybe, if you're still walking in if, if you're still walking in I'm not sure, if you're still walking in all of that stuff, I'm telling you, you got the authority to kick it out. Because God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That word power simply means I got a made up mind. I'm fully. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm like Paul in this season. Paul says, I am fully convinced. Yeah. Simply meaning that I don't, I, doubt can't get in here. Yeah, yeah, Timidity yeah. can't get in here. Fear can't get in here. Nothing can get in here. I hear you, but I'm not listening. Right. I'm fully, fully, I'm fully persuaded yeah. in this season yeah. that it's bigger than this. Yeah. It's bigger than this. Yeah. It's bigger than, yeah. bigger than this. I'm fully persuaded. Yeah, you can't tell me nothing yeah. else. You can't tell me anything else because I'm fully persuaded in this season. I'm fully persuaded in this season. Did you get this? God wants you to experience a peace internally that not based on what happens. God wants you to experience a peace internally that's not Based on things that happen externally. Yeah. He wants you to experience that type of peace. Mm -hmm. That things that happen externally, they don't determine what happens to you internally. 
Because sometimes God will not change what's happening on the outside of you. Yes, God. But the inside of you doesn't have to respond mm. to that. You have to understand that when God allows you to go into the fiery furnace, my, my. two things happen. My, my. He's going to take you out of it, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't, he's going to make you fireproof. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so the two things are you're going to become fireproof. My, 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 yeah. To where when you come out of it, you won't even be smelling yeah, like I smoke. It may be fire going on outside of you, but it doesn't have to determine what's happening on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. So I got four minutes to give you four points. I'm going to spend one minute on each of them. <laughs> four things to change your narrative on. Number one is this. You're in between season. Is your season, it's normally your season of preparation. Your in between season is normally your yeah. season of preparation for your elevation. I said, y'all, look, yeah. let me tell you where I get that from. Because in verse 1 through 5, I told you they made a plan to betray Jesus. In verses 14 through 16, G, uh, Judas come in alignment to betray Jesus. Their in between season was the season that Jesus was anointed. Getting ready for his season of elevation, yes. for his preparation for his season of elevation. I don't know what God is preparing you for your elevation season. It probably seems like you probably said, Pastor, you own it today because yesterday season probably felt like something was going on, like you felt like things was happening. And then you in the future you begin to think about things that are going to happen. But I'm telling you, right where you are right now is that in between season. Well, God is preparing you for a season of elevation. Number two is this. Number two is this. Y'all listen real fast. Y'all got to get there. If all you see is what you see, then you will always miss out on what God desires for you to see. If all you see is what you see, then you will always miss out on what God desires you to see. What do you mean by that, Pastor D? I already let the cat out the bag. I told you in verses 8. They were indignant. Mm. They were indignant. Simp that word indignant simply meant that they were mad. They were upset. They was frustrated. They was like, why, why, why? Mm. They were frustrated at frustrated. Jesus. They were mad. They were angry. They said, it could have been sold. All right. Mm. For a lot of money. And gave it to the poor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus says in verse 10. He said, that was a good thing. Walk with me. They were indignant about it. They were mad about it. They was frustrated about it. They was angry about it. Jesus says, Jesus had a different point of view. Jesus changed the narrative. He said, no, that wasn't, that, that wasn't indignant. They were angry about it. Jesus was at peace about it. They was frustrated about it. Jesus was at peace about it. I don't know who I'm talking to. Some of us in a season right now where you're seeing it one way and God has said something else about it in this way. God is trying to get you to change your point of view in this season. You mad about it. You frustrated about it. You thinking this shouldn't have happened to me. Paul says this, when I am weak, your power is made perfect in this situation. You may see yourself as weak, but the I am strong. Yes. You see it yourself one way and God says this is a perfect opportunity for my power to be made perfect in your situation. This is a time. So if you see what, if you only see what you see, then you will always miss out on what God desires for you. See, number three is this. Number three is this. What seems expensive to you is your seed for God to bring about your harvest. Mm. What you see is, that, is, that, is expensive to you. There's simply a seed mm -hmm. for God. He says it was very expensive perfume. Mm -hmm. He says it could have been sold for a lot of money mm -hmm. and given to the poor. We would have a lot of money. She's seen it as a seed. That's right. She's seen it as a seed. Mm -hmm. 
She seated as a seat. Mm. My God. She seated. It was expensive, but she seated as a seat. Mm, 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 mm. I'm telling you, what you consider expensive, some of you is your time, some of you is your talent, some of you is your expensive. God says, you, if you give me your time, mm. I'll redeem the time. Yeah. Ah, yeah. If you give me your talent, the Bible declares that a man gives, meaning his talent will make room for it. If you give me your talents, I'll open doors for you supernaturally that you couldn't open on your own. He said, if you give me your treasure, I'll make, I'll open up the ones of heaven, pour it back to you, 36 to 90, 100 and, and, and so, but God says just a seed to me. If you ah, give me a seed, I'll bring about a harvest. Yeah, if you give me a God. seed, I'll yes, bring about a harvest. He yes, says, yes, some yes, of us yes, in the seed, yes, if you bring me your doubt, yes, if you bring me your insecurities, if you bring me all your issues, if you bring me all your problems, if you bring me your problems, I'll let you experience my promises. If you bring them to me, this is what I'll do for you. You see, you, you, you see it you see it as expensive. God said, that's a seed. I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm helping somebody. That's a seed. That's your seed. That's your seed. That's your seed. That's your seed. Don't eat 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 your seed. Who am I talking to? Don't eat your seed. Don't eat your seed. Don't eat your seed in this season. Don't eat your seed. Don't eat your seed. You see it as expensive. God see it as a seed. Last thing I want to tell you is this. Trust God even when you don't understand God. Trust God even when you don't understand God. They didn't understand what was going on. They didn't understand the anointing. They didn't understand why all of that was happening. They didn't understand it. Was Bethany. God seen Gethsemane. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. All you see is your current situation. Right. All you see is what's going on right now. Mm. Yes. All Hallelujah. you see is what you don't have. Mm. All you see is what has to happen. Yes. All you see is what I want to happen. Mm. Yes. God sees the beginning, the destiny. Yes. God sees your final transformation. Yes. God sees ah. the final results. Yes. God sees it. You, and he Lord. says, like, this is what you see, but I see all of it. <laughs> I see all of it. And I need to take you this way. Yes. And you're trying to do all of this and go that way. God yes. says, I see it. I see it. Yes. Like, like you, you have a 10-foot view. God has a 30,000 square foot view. He sits high and looks low. Yes. God wants to change your narrative yes. in this season. Yes. All you see is Bethany. Mm. God sees Gethsemane. Thank you, 